Do regular film cameras work in space? Are there any special video equipment that NASA engineers work on? And is it possible to stream from space with just a smartphone? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Roman and this is Mobavi Vlog, your go-to channel for making great videos. A few days ago, the US Aerospace Agency, NASA, published a video of the landing of the rover Perseverance on Mars. It was filmed by spacecraft cameras in high quality. I was watching it closely because I'm a huge space geek and wondered how did they do that? Okay, I don't mean the landing itself, that's too complicated for sure, but what about filming in space? What cameras were used to record video on this mission, and what kind of video equipment was used in space at the dawn of the space era. If you're curious about this too, be sure to keep watching and give this video a huge like. Here we go. So the long story short, the Mars Perseverance rover was sent to the red planet to study its surface back in July 2020. It reached its destination at the end of January 2021. Video cameras installed on Perseverance captured how it descended to the surface of the planet, how the parachute was triggered, how the lower protective screen was thrown. It looked really impressive. Previously, we could see all these details of the complex process of landing only at the computer animation, but now, thanks to the cameras, we were able to see it all in reality. There were five video cameras on the descent module, two on the upper protective shield, two on the rover itself, pointing up and down, and one on the sky crane. And all of them are ordinary ones. They are not specifically prepared for space. The clips were published with a slight delay after shooting because of the very large amount of information. The rover first sent everything to the Martian retransmitter satellite and then to Earth. All of this is a pretty significant event and it's super cool that we have video proofs of it. And before we go any further, I want to say a few words about most handy software to make videos with. We have a hot deal to offer. Movavi Video Suite 2021. The Movavi's best-selling software package is available at a great discount. Movavi Video Suite 2021 is a set of intuitive programs such as Movavi Video Editor Plus, Screen Recorder, and Video Converter Premium. The main menu of Movavi Video Suite is customizable. You can put icons of frequently used apps right on the main tab, add more Movavi apps for an extra fee, get access to tutorials and the Movavi store without having to open your browser. This package may come in handy for beginners and basically anyone who's looking for fast and convenient software. With our special coupon, you'll be able to get Video Suite at the price of Movavi Video Editor Plus. On top of this deal, we'll give you a 15% discount on our top three space-themed effect sets, watercolor galaxies, future is now, and the brand new universe of particles. If you like the deal, just click on the link below to redeem your coupons. Going back to NASA and stuff. So now we can really watch how the Mars rover lands and what happens on the International Space Station, but initially photography and videography weren't considered to be an important part of the space missions and the guys from NASA didn't bother to prepare any special equipment for low temperatures, space radiation, in other non-standard conditions. Moreover, it turned out that even quite ordinary earthly photo and video devices work well in space. For example, the first American astronaut John Glenn, who flew into space in 1962, took into orbit the most common 35mm ANSCO autoset camera made by Minolta, which he bought in a store near his home. He probably did it to avoid delays if he had gone through the standard government acquisitions process. Then NASA NASA engineers modified the camera to make it easier to use while in space. They added a pistol grip with thumb paddles to make it easier to use the camera with bulky gloves. They also added a viewfinder so it could be used with the suit helmet closed. 
However, John Glenn wasn't the first space traveler with a camera. In 1961, a Russian astronaut, German Titov, carried a Soviet Converse movie camera and had about 300 meters of film. Unfortunately, during the launch, the exposure setting dial broke, so Titov had to guess his way through the exposures. Anyway, he did a good job and thanks to him, we had the first video taken by a human in open space. Anyway, when the astronauts had to choose between delivering photographic and video equipment, the choice fell on photography. Just because photos have much more scientific value, photographic cameras were more reliable than movie ones and it was much more easier to transmit photographic material to Earth. Recently, the ISS received a wide channel of communication with Earth, which allows transmitting video in addition to other important information. And delivering the information from digital cameras is simple. Images and video are transmitted to Earth via communication channels and all originals are returned to Earth on memory cards and special protective boxes. For a decade, NASA used Swedish Hasselblad cameras to take pictures in space. For example, during the Apollo program, 13 Hasselblads visited the Moon. For the sake of saving fuel, almost all cameras were left on the surface of the Earth satellite. Astronauts took with them only tapes with the footage, but actually one camera returned to Earth and in 2014 it was sold at auction for 660,000 euros. But the era of Hasselblad in space ended in the early 70s, and since then it has been Nikon's time. During the use of Nikon cameras in space, experts have made many changes in its design. For example, they made a more robust metal construction, used vacuum-safe lubricants, sealed the screws with special glue, enlarged the buttons for easy work with gloves on, coated the body with special anti-glare paint, made a sticky buckle for attachment to the spacesuit instead of the belt, and so on. As you can see, there were a lot of modifications. Before using the camera in space, specialists had to make sure that it would work properly under the influence of space radiation. They need to check whether it can function in a vacuum and under the extreme temperature conditions of space. They also have to make sure that it can withstand vibrations during launch and that it won't cause electromagnetic interference. Gradually, engineers have also brought mass cameras close to the space standard, so now many cameras that we use on Earth are quite suitable for astronauts. Now astronauts switch to digital SLRs instead of film cameras, but most of them are still made by Nikon. However, of course, from time to time other manufacturers' models are also sent into space. Like, of course, space just couldn't do without GoPro cameras. Such cameras allow us to see more detailed videos. Unlike a bulky SLR camera, a few GoPros can be attached to a spacesuit or a rocket and shoot video from different angles at the same time. You may think that it's difficult to take pictures or record a video in outer space or on the surface of another planet. Well, even on the International Space Station itself, it's not an easy task. The ISS is very cramped and lacks space. Also, there are really muddy portholes. As you may guess, it's not easy to clean the windows in space and they are constantly covered with various microparticles. Then, of course, it is very difficult to use a camera in zero gravity. There is no place to put a tripod, so most of the shots are handheld. But the most important problem, perhaps, is the harsh cosmic radiation. On Earth, the photo and video equipment are reliably protected from it by the atmosphere. In space, pixels on the new metrics are knocked out after a month and a half of use. Another enemy of the sensor is dust, which does not settle in zero gravity. It's always there in the air, it gets inside the camera during lens changes, so matrices fail very quickly in space. That's why today people on the ISS prefer to use the most common cameras, just because it's cheaper. 
it would be too expensive to change special space versions of cameras made in small rounds too often. An ordinary onboard camera, usually with a 50mm lens, is also used during spacewalks. However, they are dressed in special protective thermal wraps and have a special viewfinder, so it could be used in a spacesuit helmet. Remember I said at the beginning that the Mars Perseverance rover has regular cameras? That's because the standard of modern cameras has improved a lot in recent years. Although cameras are often modified for a space flight, not every camera has to be special, and it's possible that the camera which you used to shoot your vlogs now could also cope with the space mission. And as for taking video in space using a smartphone, well, yeah, it still sounds like a distant future, but for example, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro camera has already been in space at about 30 km altitude with a specially designed satellite and during the flight took video and took some clear pictures of Earth. Sounds really cool. So that was it for today, guys. I hope you learned something new from this video. And I believe that the era of space tourism is just around the corner. So who knows? Maybe in the future, some of us will be vlogging straight from space at some point. We'll see. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Roman. This is Mobile Vlog. I'll see you very soon.